AI can now read our minds. In this research paper out of Osaka University in Japan, they detail using stable diffusion to map to brain activity to generate images of what that brain is seeing. It's absolutely mind-blowing and futuristic. Let's take a look. So this paper is called High Resolution Image Reconstruction with Latent Diffusion Models from Human Brain Activity. Latent diffusion is what stable diffusion uses, which is the technology behind most generative AI art projects out there, including Midjourney. And so let's look at the images at the top. These are the results, and then we'll dive into the details and show how they did it. So the gist of the experiment is they showed subjects images and used an fMRI machine to read brain activity once those images were shown to the subjects. Then they mapped that to stable diffusion and stable diffusion was actually able to create the images from that brain activity. Really stunning. Look at these examples. So on the left, we have a teddy bear. This was the input image shown to the subjects. And then below that, we have the output image that was read from the fMRI by stable diffusion. And this is what it output. So pretty accurate. So I highlighted a few interesting parts and I'm gonna go over them. Here, we propose a new method based on a diffusion model, DM, to reconstruct images from human brain activity obtained via functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI. More specifically, we rely on a latent diffusion model termed stable diffusion and stable diffusion created by stability.ai. We show that our proposed method can reconstruct high resolution images with high fidelity in straightforward fashion without the need for any additional training and fine tuning of complex deep learning models. Overall, our study proposes a promising method for reconstructing images from human brain activity. So literally it is reading your mind. Here it says a big challenge of doing this is the fact that the underlying representations in the brain are largely unknown. And funnily enough, the way that stable diffusion works is pretty unknown still. Researchers have started addressing this task using deep learning models and algorithms, including generative adversarial networks, GANs, and self-supervised learning. However, these studies require training new generative models with fMRI data from scratch or fine tuning toward the specific stimuli used in the fMRI experiment. And they detail some of the challenges, including these large models being extremely difficult to train and a huge lack of data to train the models on as well. Even modern implementations struggle to produce images, at most 256 by 256 resolution with high semantic fidelity, actually being able to know what the image is about, unless they are augmented with numerous tools and techniques. And here's something that I found absolutely stunning. A predictive model of brain activity is built out of features extracted from different components of the deep learning models. The way that the human brain interprets images is very similar to the way that artificial networks interpret images. And they were actually able to map a bunch of different layers from how the brain interprets images to how stable diffusion interprets images. And that's really how they were able to achieve the high quality that they were able to get. And followed by an examination of the potential link between model representations and corresponding brain processes. So again, there's the way that the models work and the way that the brains work, and they're connecting the dots. They're saying these are really similar. So if we map them together, we're gonna to produce similar images. Because brains and deep learning models share similar goals, recognition of the world, and thus could implement similar functions, the ability to establish connections between these two structures provides us with biological interpretations of the architecture underlying deep learning models otherwise viewed as black boxes. So again, right now, the brain, pretty much a black box, how it works for a lot of things. These large models, large language models, stable diffusion, pretty much a black box also. And here's a little bit about the data set. Briefly, NSD provides data acquired from a seven Tesla fMRI scanner over 30 to 40 sessions during which each subject viewed three repetitions of 10,000 images. So a subject is sitting there being shown images and then the fMRI is reading the brain activity. And one of the huge innovations here is the fact that they're using off the shelf stable diffusion models, no longer needed to fine train really custom large models. They're just using the ones that are coming off the shelf that are the same as what's being used in generative art projects. The only training required in our method is to construct linear models that map fMRI signals to each LDM component and no training or fine tuning of deep learning models is needed. 
And so how did they actually assess the quality of the images? Let's look at that now. The accuracy of the image reconstruction was evaluated objectively, PSMs, perceptual similarity metrics, and subjectively, human raters, six of them, by assessing whether the original test images could be identified from the generated images. So they have the test images being shown to the subjects, and then the raters have to try to find those images in the output images from the fMRI machines. So let's look at these examples here. These are the ground truths on the left, the ones that have the red outline on them. We have a train, a teddy bear, a clock tower, and somebody skiing. And so what we're seeing is Z looks kind of like it, but you can't really tell what it is. Kind of generally, if you were to blur your eyes and look at it, you can kind of see the outlines, the silhouettes are generally similar to it. Next, we have C, and these images look like the subject, but are visually inconsistent with the original image. So here's a train, and then we have this, which is looking like a train, but heading in the opposite direction. Then we have ZC, which is a combination of Z and C, and now this one is even better. So here we have the train heading in the right direction, although this train doesn't look as accurate as C. The teddy bear looks really good, the clock tower looks good, and the person skiing looks pretty good. Now let's read what it says about these images. On the one hand, images reconstructed using only Z, and this, this column, were visually consistent with the original images but failed to capture their semantic content. Meaning, what do they actually look like? On the other hand, images reconstructed using only C-generated images with high semantic fidelity but were visually inconsistent. So that's this column. So they looked like it, but they're not consistent with what the actual original image is. Finally, images reconstructed using ZC could generate high resolution images with high semantic fidelity. Here are some more examples, ground truths. These are from different subjects. So these are read from different people's brain activity and you can see all of them are somewhat similar. And so that's it, AI reading our mind. This is a huge step forward in interpreting the data coming out of fMRI machines and actually being able to understand what is the brain doing when it's interpreting the things that the eyes are seeing. As mentioned, the brain, these large models, they operate very similarly, it turns out. And if we map how they operate to each other, we're actually able to generate what the brain is seeing using models like stable diffusion. If you like this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.